Hey guys, and welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we are going to explore how to create fluid 3D logo aesthetics inspired by the artist Winston Schwenk. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I will guide you through the process of crafting easily 3D logos, applying dynamic materials with stickers and achieving stunning render effects. Whether you are new or just looking to expand your skills, this tutorial will give you all necessary tools to create stunning visuals. Woo! Let's go guys! The 3D, the 3D objects. objects. Find the code in the video 24 hours after release and get free project files. Alright, let's start with the tutorial. First we will create this 3D Nike logo and for this we need Adobe Illustrator. But if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, you can download the 3D model on my Patreon for free. Link is in the caption. Create first a new file, 1080 by 1080 pixels. And in the next step you can drag and drop an image of a logo of your choice. Select it and go here to the top under Picture Tracer. Now Adobe Illustrator will create a vector graphic out of it and press again on Convert. Delete the black background and also this black area here and now you have a perfect vector graphic. Now select everything, go under Effects and choose 3D and choose Inflate. Here under Death we choose 0 we want that the 3D graphic get volume on both sides and that's it. Go now under 3D object export, press T on the X key and select the format we use for Blender OBJ. And if you hit export you get the file. So when you are ready open Blender, delete the light, the cube and the camera with the X key, go under file, import and choose OBJ and import the 3D model. That's it. So as you can see in our example we will work later on with displacement and bump maps. So go here under line view and as you can see the mesh is thicker on the N and I. We will know later on that the displacement map will different shown on this objects here. To fix it we have to go to edit mode and select the N and the I and for this we need the circle select and select it. If you select something wrong you can hold the shift key and then you can deselect. So and now we want to separate this both letters. Press the P key and choose selection. Now we have two different elements and we can then later on edit bump and displacement maps differently. Now we can go back to the object mode. Go back here to viewport number two. Add the plane as the background, rotate it here in 90 degrees by X and rescale it and also go to the side and bring it behind the logo. That looks good. And we also add in this step the camera. So now we go here under the camera and we choose our render region. Under this tag I choose 1080 by 1080 pixels and that's it for the 3D model part. Do you want the whole project file? You can have it! <gasps> With over 70 other files that we have already created together guys. You can find them on my Patreon, link is in the caption. The materials. Now you can download all HDRI maps and textures for the material part. Go go go! Download it! And let's move on with the tutorial. Alright, now we came to the cool part, the material part. And first we split our view in two. Go for it to the top left corner until a plus appear. And change here to shader editor. And here we need viewport shading number four. Now it's everything dark because we need light. And for this we change here in the world mode. And we search for environment texture, mapping and for geometry. Perfect. Now we go here under open and we, we insert our HDRI map. And you can find the uh, Studio HDRI map on my Patreon for free. Link is in the caption. 
And I already did the project before. And under mapping, you can change the HDRI map. You can rotate it as ever you want, guys. And for me, it was the best result to change rotation Z by 70 degrees. So under background, you can change the strength, how intense you want the light. Here we choose a value of four. Now we change it back to the object mode and we will create our first material. That's the plane material. To create a new material, press the plus icon and we change here the color to a warm gray. This is my color code. And we change metalness to 1 and roughness to 0 0.8. Perfect. All right. And now we will create our logo material with the water drops. So select it. The material is already created from Adobe Illustrator before. Here we change metallic to 0 0.1, roughness to 0. And we will create a transparent material. For it, we have to go under transmission and change it to 1. So for this project, we will work with Eve. Go here to camera and here under the render tag. And first we have to put a check mark under ambient inclusion and screen space refraction to get a transparent material. And we have to put a check mark under refraction. We still see nothing because we have to go select it here again, go under the material tag. And here we have to put a check mark under back face culling. Ray trace refraction and subsurface translucency. And as you can see, now the material is really transparent. And under refraction depth, we have to change the value to 7. Perfect. All right. Edit the material. First, we take the base color. We need a color RAM and we need also Fresnel to create a death with different color values of the background on end reflections here in the scene. So here we have first to change the colors. We need in the beginning white. Press now the plus button to create a new color. Now you can go here. This is my color code. This is something near like the background color. Select now the black color and here we change it to a darker brown like this. So now you can play with the values, how strong you want the different color values inside of the logo. That looks good. Now we will create the noisy spots here on the logo, like for example here. For this we have to connect something with roughness and that's the noise texture. And here we need texture coordinate with the UV port. And as you can see, we get now the lighter spots on the logo. You can also play with the values. I choose a value of 10 under scale. Under detail, we choose 15 and that's it. That looks good. So, but for me, are the spots a little bit too white in this case. So to fix it, we also search here for color ramp and you can increase and decrease the effect. So when you use the black color, you can see how strong you want it. For me, that that's enough. That looks good. So now we will create the water drop texture. And here we will work with a bump. You have to connect it with the normal. Then go here to height, search for image texture. In the same time, we can also go from this spot and search for displacement. Connect it also with height. And here we have to connect displacement with displacement. All right. To edit the effect later on, we also search here for mapping. Here we change to texture. And now we can use the same texture coordinates like for the noise texture and connect it here with the vector. All right, here we have to insert now our bump map. The map looks like this. You can find it for free on my Patreon. Link is in the caption. So when the image is inserted, everything looks like this. The bubbles are really big. Under mapping, you can change the size. Under scale, we choose 0 0.2 in all axes. That looks good, but still too strong. Now you can play with the strength value of the bump map. Here we choose a value of 0 0.2. And from, for the displacement, we choose mid-level 0 0.1. So, and that's enough. So, perfect, guys. We also can go to IOR and change the value to 1.4.
like a real plastic that looks good. So now we take this material, copy it, go now to this elements, delete the material here with the X key, paste it here inside and connect it with the material output and the displacement. And here we have also go under the material and repeat the check marks and refraction depth was 7 meters. And as I already explained before, you can see that the bubbles here are bigger than on the N and I. To fix it, we have to go here under mapping and under X and Y we choose a value of 0 0.5. And now we have the same bubble size on the whole logo. So in the last step, we will add the stickers. And you can get also the stickers for free on my Patreon that I used here in this project. Um, I only used Photoshop. I created again 1080 by 1080 pixels. So you can also create your own stickers and import it as a PNG with transparent background and you can use it later on also for your own project. So. To add the stickers on the surface, we need a free plugin. So the plugin calls import as decal free blender add-on. Add it to cart, download it, and you have to put here zero. Now you can get it, zero again. And as you can see, our blender version is not updated anymore. Use the newest file, this one, and it also works, guys. So, all right, and to install it, go under preferences, then to install, go to downloads, search the file, put then a check mark on it, install it and refresh it. So, and now we can add the stickers. Select it, go then to add, image and image as decal. Now we have here the stickers. Select one. Now you have to go under the transform window. Zero Z out. So now you can bring it here to the front. And here is the sticker. It's really small. You can rescale it under scale, of course. And bring it to a position of your choice. And as you can see, it fits perfectly on the shape. Now you can insert so many stickers how you want. You know now how it works. All right. So. As you can see, it's not really tidy. You get also a new material here with different values. You can play around, but for me was the best value contrast 10 and roughness 0.1. And when you are ready with your stickers, select the sticker, convert it to mesh that it don't get transformed anymore. And you have to bring it a little bit to the front that it looks better. And now you have the perfect sticker on your surface. But as you can see, there are no water drops on it. To fix it, we take our material here from the main 3D object and we only select the bump displacement part, copy it, go to the sticker material, paste it and connect bump with bump strength and displacement with displacement. And as you can see, there are really small water drops on it, but we want it bigger. So we go under mapping again, remember, and under scale, we can increase the bubble water drop size and two is a good value. And as you can see, we have here also now our water drops. So guys, let your creativity and flow and create really cool sticker logos. I think one example is enough. You know now how it works. It's really simple. And that's it for the material part. The animation. The animation. 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 Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to more awesome content. Alright, now we came to the last part, the animation part. And for this, we have first select everything, convert it to mesh and join it that we get one object. Alright, so to create the animation like in the beginning, we have to animate um, once the logo and once the camera. And we start with the camera. We need again the transform window and this is our perfect location. Bring the animation slider to the end to 150 frames and insert the keyframe. So now we can increase the animation to 300 and now we select the whole logo. Go to frame 
200 and rotate it by minus 30 and insert the keyframe. Go now to 250, bring it to zero, insert the keyframe and go to 300 and in, uh, choose 30 and insert again a keyframe. Now it's rotating and go back to 150 because we forgot in the beginning, zero it out to set a keyframe. All right. Now we have also our keyframe for our camera view. Here we go to frame 120 and we can now zoom in and bring it here to the side. Insert a new keyframe and go to the beginning of the animation and bring it under X to the beginning location. Insert a new keyframe and that's it. If you hit play you get this cool animation as in my example. And in the end, we want that the whole animation is linear. For this, we have to go to graph editor, select some points, go to select, select all. Now all points in the animation are selected. Go to interpolation mode and choose linear. Now the animation in the same speed and that's it. Three reasons why you should follow me on my social media channels. One. There you can get exclusive shoutouts if you tag me at Art Invader. Two. There you can vote for upcoming projects. Three. Exclusive quick tips to get a pro in 3D. Thank you for your support, guys. And that's it. Well done, Art Invaders. If you like the video, please leave a like, follow or comment. And we see us in the next week.